All right, welcome, welcome to a new class. Today we're gonna do something fun. So today we're gonna download some MP3s. Oh no, not illegally, that's right. So uh, you can actually go to th this website here called, um, you can go create, you can Google Creative Commons MP3 and then you can go to like Creative Commons and then here is CC Mixer and you can go to CC Mixer there. And um, then you, I just went to Pix here and then I downloaded this song called Minor Swing. Uh, there it is. And so I've already downloaded it. And um, so now that we have an MP3, you might say, well, how are you going to play the MP3? Now, this, this kind of lesson that I'm giving you is going to be teaching you how to play audio files, specifically an MP3, uh, with uh, an FLTK uh, or a Python FLTK GUI. However, what is m even more important than that is I've decided to teach this to you in a way that uses subprocess. In other words, we kind of spawn a subprocess in order to execute a, a different program to run the, uh, the audio file. Now I know I've Googled on the internet and there are other ways to do this in Python. Like for example, I think you can import Pygame and, uh, and, and import Mixer from Pygame and you can, you can even do it. I think there's a VLC uh, plug-in I think for Python as well but in any case listen my objective here is not just to teach you how to play an mp3 using Python but also my objective is so that you learn how to launch any program from Python I think this is more powerful so um, yeah okay so therefore what's the program we're gonna use to run it well I decided on uh, the VideoLand client VLC media player because it's cross-platform as you can see it runs on everything and uh, yeah so you can download it and install it on your own computer and so here is subprocess so subprocess is a way to start other programs from within Python and since we're using subprocess, uh, we're going to be using another program or another, I should say, module called uh, Signal. And if we kind of scroll up here, uh, Signal is a way of s sending specific signals to a running process. And um, unfortunately, it turns out that this is a little bit more flexible in uh, in Linux but we can have basic functionality in Windows but in Linux I think I can do a little bit more we'll see in any case uh, let's get started let's take a look at the code okay actually before we look at the code I wanted to uh, go over something subprocess.run is the kind of modern way in Python 3 to run subprocesses. The the problem with it though that I dislike or I couldn't get it to work right maybe if you guys know how to do this properly you can, can uh, put it in the comments or something but I I didn't want the process to wait for it to finish and that's that's the problem I was running into so therefore I used popen and um, I found popen to be uh, nice because when I ran the process it actually kind of well in Linux it does a fork I think and then in Windows it does like a create process in any case uh, yeah see it describes it right there um, the point my point being is that it doesn't interrupt it doesn't it doesn't stop the FLTK uh, runtime where you're waiting for events okay so the other thing that we, the other uh, signals that I used, one of them was uh, signal.stop, and if I go sig 
stop, which is basically, it's here, it's uh, surprised that it's not actually documented very well in the uh, Python standard documentation, but essentially what it does is it kind of freezes um, or suspends the process, and then to undo that, there's uh, signal dot uh, continue, and you can see its availability. Now the other one, uh, and this is actually available in both Windows and Linux, is sig term, and uh, oops, I spelt it wrong. There it is, signal termination. Uh, sig term will actually cause on um, if I look it up here. Sig term will actually cause, uh, yeah, okay, so it's right here. It says, note, on Windows, sig term is an alias for terminate. So notice here, if I go popen.terminate, stop the child. So uh, I think this should work for uh, on termi terminating a function, or sorry, a process will work on Windows as well. I'm not sure about stopping and continuing, though. Okay, so now let's go to the code. Okay, so let me show you how to run something on a terminal uh, to play the music, for example. If I typed in VLC uh, Zapack, now I don't want a whole GUI, a graphical user interface to come up with, um, so I'll go, I think it's like interface is dummy, and then I'll go Zapack. So if I do this, so you can you can see that I can play it. I just hit Control C to stop it. But that was the song Zapack um, that we, that I showed you where we downloaded it from. But you can see that in fact I'm able to play it from the command line. Now you notice that what I typed in to make it play. And by the way, this will work on Windows too. Uh, you just have to obviously open a uh, command prompt and type that in and as long as you have the mp3 in your directory as I do and obviously you're not going to type in uh, ls you're going to type in dir in Windows to see what you have but the point is that now that we know what the command is which is highlighted what well, was highlighted right there how do I then tell popen or subprocess to run the same command. What I need you to be very careful uh, noticing is where are all the spaces? So there's a space right there. Okay, so there's a space, there's a space, and there's a space. So this is actually a very good example of why I really dislike using spaces in file names. So I don't my mp3 doesn't have any spaces in the file name. Okay, great. So, let's uh, go to our code now. Okay, now, now let's start IPython 3, and now let's actually run that same file through the subprocess. So let's go uh, import subprocess as sp again because I'm I'm lazy I don't want to type too much and now we're gonna go sp now for it, this is gonna return something but I'll just type it for you anyway sp now listen I could go sp dot run and type in now it's gonna expect a uh, a list of everything I typed in before now, I don't know if you can still see it on the screen but it's right up here so it's VLC interface dummies a pack so now it's going to be VLC as a string, comma, so this is a list, right? And then the next thing that comes in is the next thing after the space. So interface, yep, and then a comma, and then another word dummy, and then another string, and this is now going to be uh, the MP3. So you can see how I have, and of course that's a list, and I've got to close off my run. Now listen. If I run this now, you're going to notice that what's going to happen is run is going to wait for, the pr for that process to finish. Now this song might be three to five minutes long. I'm not going to wait three to five minutes long for this process 
uh, to end. And so therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use popen instead. So if I go popen and I run this, now look what's going to happen. So the, the music starts, you can hear it, but now how do I stop it? Let me turn down the volume here a little bit. I think you can still probably hear it. And the way I'm going to stop it is there's a, there's a variety of different ways how I could stop it. But I'm going to go like this. I'm going to have to, let's turn the volume down a little bit more. And I'm going to go import signal. And now I'm going to go, oh, I can't actually. Ah. Uh, bad me look I didn't actually specify anything that it was equal to here so now I don't have the process ID to kill this thing wonderful uh, how am I going to stop it okay so you notice turn up the volume I've exited IPython but the music still going so uh, what do I do well I'm going to use a Linux command now I'm going to say kill all processes that start with, or that, that are VLC. Yay, I stopped it now. Okay, now kill all, it doesn't, it's not a Windows thing. It's a, it's a Linux thing only. So now how would I do this in Python properly? So let's do it again. Okay, let's go back into IPython. But this time, uh, let's import subprocess again as SP. Yep, okay. Now, now here comes the difference, okay? By the way, let's import signal as well because, listen, we're going to need it anyway, and it's good to import things first, not halfway through a program. So now, let's now say PID equals. This is something I didn't do the first time around. Now when I run this, you're going to hear the music again, okay, here. But now... What I'm going to do is I'm now going to, because I have the PID, I can now go uh, PID, hold on. Yeah, okay, I remembered it. All right, all right, here it is. So it's PID.send underscore signal. And now I'm going to, because I've imported signal, right? I'm going to go sig term dot sig, oh sorry, sig, not sig term, signal, I'm messing up here, signal dot, here let me turn down the volume, okay, so it's, it's a uh, signal dot sig, I can't type, there, that, now I'll turn up the volume and you'll see what happens when I send this, ready? And it killed the music. So what I did by SIGTERM, by the way, SIGTERM will actually work in window, Windows as well. It'll actually call dot terminate. So it's actually, basically in Windows, it's like doing this. I think that's what it does. So doing line four here will actually accomplish line five in, in Windows. Now, point is though, is that we can even get a little bit more complicated with this because there are other signals that we can use, uh, suspend and resume. And let me show you what those ones are. So I've got to start the process up again. So let's start it up again. So here it is. Okay, here we go. It's playing again. Now this time I'm going to pause it. Ready? Watch. I'm going to go SIG stop. Now pay close attention to where the music is, okay? So now, it, it's now paused. If I want to start it up again, all I have to do is go SIG continue. So I'm actually sending signals to a running process. Now in this case, the, the process is not dead, it's just simply uh, suspended. So it's not running. So now that I'm going to send the signal continue to it, watch what's going to happen. There we go. And now I've stopped it. Okay, 
So this is pretty cool. Now the question is, how do we put this into a Python program? So some of you guys might be thinking, wow, this is such an odd way of you know, running MP3s. Like I said, there are other uh, audio libraries for Python. Yes, so why am I doing it this way? Answer is because this is so flexible. You can run any program you choose, not just an MP3 or not just like an audio file. You can actually use what you're learning right now to run any process using Python. That's why Python is such an awesome glue language. That's what they say. Okay. Okay. All right, so here is my Python code. And listen, I got to tell you guys something. We are in this course, we are going to learn how to do object-oriented programming. And by golly, it's going to be about time we learn how to do object-oriented programming because this is not object-oriented programming. And there is, you're going to see in, our, in my functions above, I'm, I'm going to be using the term global. And uh, programmers are kind of like, yeah, you shouldn't use global. And that's true. And the reason why, not the reason why, the reason you, the way you get around using global is by doing object-oriented programming. So that's coming. So we're, gonna, we're still going to kind of cheat today. So the first thing I do is I'm going to set my PID equal to zero. And by the way, if you're on Linux, don't freak out. Uh, we're not going to mess with PID zero. That's the the process ID that starts up your whole operating system. Uh, this is running as uh, our user, not as root, by the way. So we're going to create the window here uh, on the next line. And then we're going to start adding some widgets. I'm going gonna, gonna to add a play button, a stop button, a pause button, and a resume button. OK? And you notice I'm using those uh, funny looking things uh, as the labels. Those. Uh, they're in the documentation. There's a whole bunch of them, by the way. Um, then I'm going to create the callbacks. Now listen here. This is something kind of cool because I, when I initially wrote this, I had separate callback functions for all of them. And then I decided, hey, you know what? Uh, I don't need to do that because I don't like doing code duplication because I was basically typing or copy pasting the same thing again and again. So um, the play one is unique. But then these three guys, the sig term, the st so the stop, or yeah, that's basically like st stop playing, right? This is actually pause, but the signal on that is called sig stop, so don't get that confused. And then the resume is uh, sig continue. So what I'm doing is I'm, I have the same callback, right? It's the same callback, signal CB, signal CB, signal CB. But I'm sending as the second optional argument to the callback, right? Because we've done that before. I'm sending the different signals, OK? So OK, so let's take a look now at the actual um, functions. And here they are. So play is, that's where I'm using global. And so now what I do here is I say, if the PID is equal to zero, okay? So, all right. So why do I have this not equal to zero? It's because when I initially start the program here, PID, and by the way, just to make this clear, that variable that I call PID stands for process ID, but you can use anything you want. It's just a variable. You can use x. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted it to be descriptive. So that's why I have to use global here. Um, and the reason why I do that, oops, actually, this shouldn't be here twice, is that um, I'm actually uh, trying to tell. I have to, well, first here, I'm, I'm setting it equal to 0. So as, as, as soon as I do that, it becomes a local variable in the function. Um, and to tell you the truth, now that I think of it, the only function that actually requires the global is the one where I set it. But um, this one does. This one has to be global. 
because I'm setting it equal to something. So now PID is local and I don't want it to be local because if it is, it's only going to exist in that function. So I need the global here. In this one, I need global because I'm setting it equal to zero here. Uh, once it's, in other words, once it's dead, once I kill the process, I want to set it back to zero again. And in this one, I'm actually, I don't actually need it to be global. So I can get rid of that. And then, because I don't have a local variable there, okay, for close. And that's about it. So, let, take a look at play. I say if PID is equal to zero, in other words, now what does that mean? What that means is that no, nothing playing already. No music playing already. Because I actually did try this without that, and you, I can click on play six times, and now I have six instances of the same song playing all in the background. You, you don't want that. It doesn't sound good to have the same song playing, overlapping each other, right? So that's why, that's why I do this. And when I stop it, then when it goes back to zero, I can start playing it a, a different song, okay? Now, obviously, in this case, uh, I'm playing the same song, but how hard would it be just to change this uh, string variable here called the pack? Very easy. In fact, you know, that's a, that would be a cool assignment, wouldn't it? Um, so now, the, that's all I'm doing is I'm calling popen again with the exact arguments you saw me do in IPython. And then to stop it, right, now I'm saying if the PID is not equal to zero, that means something is playing, okay? Because I don't, I don't want this to, so um, already playing. I want to call. I want to call sig term. Uh, I want to send the stop uh, to something that's already playing. And by the way, here uh, s is my signal, my second argument. Now you might wonder why didn't I just use sig term here for everything? Because sometimes it could be stop, and sometimes it could be continue. And but if it is, if it is sig term, if it is to kill the process. Then I want to set the PID to zero again because now nothing's playing and I want to be able to play another song if I click on play again. So that's why I have PID equals zero. Now, the other problem I discovered is that if I don't have a callback, and if you remember, I actually described this in the last class, in the last lesson, I actually made a callback for the window itself. So notice the window is called win. And I have a callback for the window, and I called it close win. Now, why do I have this? And I'll tell you why. Because if I don't have this close window um, process, what do you think is going to happen? The window will close if I can't if I click on the X. But guess what? The song is not going to stop playing because it's a separate process. And I'll show you. I'll show you how that happens. In fact, let's just run it now, and um, I'll show you what it kind of uh, is like. So let's get out of this thing, and I'll run it for you. So let's go uh, Python 3, MP3. OK, here it is. So here's my, uh, here's my program. That's what it looks like. And let me start. Let me click. But by the way, if I click Stop here, nothing happens. Pause, nothing happens. And um, Resume, nothing happens. But if I click Play, all right, it's playing now. So now I can hit pause, or sorry, stop, and it, it, it stops. Nothing happens with the other ones, okay? I can hit play again, okay? Then I can hit pause. And it, it, you notice that fraction of a second. So um, obviously, you know, that's the delay in, in in something, but I'm not exactly sure what that delay is caused by, uh, and I'm not really willing to figure it out. But if I hit continue now, there's no pause. And I, I can pause again. So you can see there's a there's a there's like a fraction of a second delay in between the time I click it and the time it stops. It's not instantaneous, but the restarting is. Um, Interestingly, though, now, um, 
if I if I make it play again, I can actually st like stop it completely now. So I'll play it, and then it stop, and this kills it. So if I click continue now, nothing's going to happen because it's it's totally stopped at this point. But let's try running it, and now let me try close the window. And so you see it actually stops. Now watch what happens if I take this callback out, this one, and I just remove this completely. So now I'm so I've I've noticed this callback though for the window. All it does is it sends the kill it, it kills the process right on this line, and then here it actually hides the window, which is what that hiding the window should do, right? But I'm also closing the, the process. So notice I've commented out the callback. So let's save this now. And now let's run it again. And now you'll see the problem. Okay, so you can you can hear it playing. And now when I close the window, it's still playing. That's not that's not really what you want your program to do, right? So I'm gonna have to go kill all VLC there to try and stop it. So obviously uh, that's a good example of something we learned uh, last lesson on how to specify a callback for the window. Okay? Okay, someone mentioned in my class that if you take out the interface dummy here, it'll when you start it up, it'll actually run as a full GUI, and you can actually play videos as well as audio files. So if I do that, uh, you know, it's going to look like this. And now you can actually um, take a look at visualizations, right? And you can turn stuff on like that. And so, okay, so that's the end of the video. I um, hope you learned a lot about. Uh, using subprocess to launch uh, whatever you want and how to stop those processes and um, control that all through the FLT the PY FLTK GUI. One last thing, if you think about what we just learned today and you thought you, and you think about what we learned last period with the browser, now you could probably combine those two and put a whole bunch of um, music or video files and uh, put those strings into the browser and now you could play them individually upon whichever one you select. So that's kind of cool.